Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm hoping this is going to work. Um, so when I was asked to do a talk or given a nudge to do a talk about design, um, I've talked about design at meetups and it, it kind of inevitably comes down to theme builders and themes and content layout and all of that sort of stuff. So I wanted to kind of challenge myself um, when I was doing the research for this. So I haven't actually done this talk before or come across this material before. So it's all new to me. So forgive me if I stumble um, and, uh, and forgive me if I can't answer all of your questions because this is uh, a conversation that I have sort of just started. And I think in light of what Luke was saying about Gutenberg and the story starting quite um, effectively with the design team and the user experience team, um, this is a nice timing to start talking about how other people can affect and help build the WordPress ecosystem and the WordPress software as we know it. So just in case this is all really boring, um, lots of people have been showing pictures of their dogs and their cats and their animals. So this is my crew, this is my son uh, Felix, this is me, this is my friend John who photobombed us. And this is my cat, Desi, who sits on my lap for half the time that I'm doing work because she likes the warmth and she likes to steal my warmth bit. Um, the other thing I wanted to just show was today I'm wearing the dinosaur in an astronaut suit dress, which I love. And I bought specifically for this event, which has nothing to do with my talk whatsoever, except that I liked it. All right, cracking on in. So. WordPress is a unique product because being open source, being around for so long, it spans a much bigger, um, oh, it's, it spans a lot more people than just, you know, small business owners. Um, we've got, you know, DIYers starting at WordPress.com as a free platform, just doing a blog. Um, and it goes up to enterprise level with the team at, say, XWP and Human Made making really large websites for large corporations and really turning WordPress on its head and using it as a content management system for really large projects um, that are exposed to everybody. So I wanted to have a talk about how you make a product that caters for all of those people and how we can continue to make it better. And so to do that, I, um, I've had a talk with a bunch of the team who actually make WordPress. But we'll get to that. Um, so we're going to talk about, a, just touch on the basics of good design and what that means for software. Um, we're going to take a little time uh, history lesson through the WordPress interface. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about what goes into the, the sort of the behind the design of WordPress. Um, we're going to meet some of the team. We're going to hear some of their insights into the future. And I'm going to talk about how you guys can get involved. Um, so before I move on, have we got designers in the room? Can I see hands of designers? Sorry that this isn't a straight talk on design. I apologize in advance. Um, have I got anyone whose time is donated or who contributes to the WordPress product at any part? So we've got Maeve. We've got other people, obviously Luke, I can't, is that? Ross, Ross, hi. I haven't seen you in a while. Okay, <laughs> so we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. Um, so good design is invisible. And this is something that I believe firmly, uh, particularly when you're talking about apps and products um, that we use and that we need. Um, and there's a few principles around that. We want it to be easy to use and the learning curve is slight. We want the interface to be consistent and intuitive. We want the design elements to equal or rival current trends and expectations. And this is kind of talking back and swinging back into the idea that there's lots of kind of peer products for WordPress. We've got the Squarespace and the Wix and the Weeblies and all the other ones. <laughs> um, and, and these things do tend to influence how our customers expect to experience WordPress. And we have to make sure that we're keeping up with that. Um, it works the way that you need it to. Um, 
uh, and you want to be able to forget about the software and just use it. And most importantly, it gets the job done. <laughs> okay. Um, so before I get too into things, I just wanted to, I, I was sent this little snippet of a snap, um, a, a Slack channel um, with the design team. This was back in January, I believe. And they were talking about this little dude here. And they're saying, can we call it the dotted hamburger menu? And someone said, has it already been renamed to that? And someone said, well, what about the kebab menu? Because <laughs> it looks a little bit like a kebab. And I'm not sure where this all went. Someone said it's a, it's a they're a vegetarian, and I'm pretty sure the kebab menu was off the menu. Um, but I, I, this, to me, pointed out quite a lot of things um, we take for granted with our designs, and particularly with product design. We, we want it to be intuitive, and we need to know how to use it before we even know, need to know how to use it. So when we're thinking about Gutenberg and the learning curve that is involved in that, throwing people in the deep end and just seeing how they use it and how they understand it based on their other understandings of products that they've been working with in the past. So I thought I would just take you quickly, I'm not going to talk about everything, um, through the WordPress interface history or timeline, if you like. Um, WordPress was born uh, on May 27, 2003. I remember the May 27 bit because that's my birthday as well. <laughs> um, and it looked a bit like this. And I'm just going to step through how it's changed a little bit. Um, in 2005, WordPress 2.0, it looked like this. And we started to have a little bit more on the interface, so we ended up with things like the page templates and the post author and page order and these kind of things. Moving forward to 2008, big jump, and we're starting to look a little bit like maybe some of you would have experienced it. Um, for me, this is actually what WordPress looked like um, when I'd seen it the first time and gone, nah, like, nope. All right. When we jump forward a little bit further, this is what I came to know as WordPress when I first started working on it. Um, in 2010, 2011. Incidentally, I installed WordPress, promptly forgot about it, and ended up selling Viagra a few months later. Learned a big lesson in that as well. But this is what WordPress looked like <laughs> <laughs> when I first got to it. All right. And then we started jumping forward. And you can see that the interface is changing significantly already. We're starting to think about the people that are using it. And we're starting to cater for the people who may not have seen WordPress or know what it's for. Um, this was also when WordPress started moving quite well, sort of significantly from being or from being known as a blogging platform to actually being more of a content management system that could be used on websites. And we started calling it WordPress websites, not just blogs. And we started to introduce the idea of people being able to customize things um, a little bit more right from their first um, experience of the installation. So I'm going to jump forward a lot, I believe. 2013, Oscar. Um, and now we're really starting to look like the, the WordPress that you guys um, would be more familiar with as well. So it's simplifying and it's bringing that, um, it's bringing in what we expect design to look like in the other applications that were being used in 2013. The, the aesthetic had changed, and so WordPress and the people behind WordPress have been making little subtle changes that you may not even realize that are happening, but they are to make sure that the people who are using WordPress for the first time are experiencing a product that matches what they're used to with other kinds of applications. So 2013 also had a a brand new um, interface release with the ability to uh, tailor the dashboard to your own um, decision on some colors. We also ended up with this new look that is very similar to what you guys would be seeing about now. And that's back in 2013. They made that big change. And in 2015, um, we introduced the customizer. So not much looks like it's actually happened between 
2013 and 2015 on the interface as you see it. But there's so much going on behind the scenes in order to enable feature enhancements and content enhancements. And so as we're working towards Gutenberg, it's really important to notice that the, you know, know that this kind of dramatic change isn't something new in WordPress and it's always pushing forward and we should be embracing it. So Gutenberg, um, you guys got a really good demo from Luke yesterday and if you didn't catch that, I highly recommend you try and see the replay on WordPress TV. Um, it's going to be good. And WordPress kind of says a new publishing experience for WordPress. Um, and I think that it is a great step forward and I, I was really interested to learn that the design team was really heavily involved in this one um, because it is such a huge, huge change. But it's also a massive change in the, the interface from a development perspective as well. And there's lots of changes that are happening um, in regards to how plugin developers um, allow their allow their products to be visible within that new interface. So I wanted to talk um, a little bit further about this. And so I, I contacted, uh, I went onto the WordPress Slack channel and I put a call out for some, if anyone would like to talk to me about what's going on behind the scenes with the WordPress design team. And I was lucky enough to uh, get a few hands up. Um, so I'm actually going to play a little snippet of those interviews. I, I mean, they were exciting to me. I spoke to each of them for at least half an hour um, and I've kind of dissected and took out a little snippet of each of their thoughts on, on what's happening and hopefully this will give you a little bit more insight as to how, um, how things are going and who's working on the team at the moment. Um, so... Ooh. My audio is not working. Can someone help with my audio? Because the rest of it's audio. <laughs> and that would be really bad if I don't have audio. <laughs> because I don't remember what they said. <laughs> For the, when you go and you try and create a, um, a WordPress talk on a subject that you don't really know well, it takes a whole lot longer. And if you try and put video in it when you're not a video editor and you don't have video tools, it takes longer again. So <laughs> um, I'm not surprised I've got technical difficulties here. That's Joshua Wald. He works with XWP, Luke's team, um, in the design team. I really want my audio. No. So there's audio. audio on that. A lot of people don't realise is... Mm -hmm. I think you just have to press that button there to, start. to play it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, actually, let's see if I can turn it here. No. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> it does not surprise me. A lot me. of people don't realise is... Yes. Okay. We're nearly ready to go again. Do you want to... Do the jazz hands, the dance that Roby spoke about yesterday or showed us yesterday. Um, I don't have any, any jokes to, to tell, sorry. Um, we're about to hear from Joshua a little bit more about the team, but there's some stats up there. Um, particularly interesting is that, and what I didn't know about, is that it's mostly made up of people who, and businesses who donate their time to the project. I'm getting a little thumbs up that we should be ready to go. A lot of people don't realize is there's not that many people working on the board. Um, in the design team, you have two people full time yeah. from Automatic who they're 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 being you know sponsored by Automatic, yeah. and then XWP part time one person, and the rest are volunteering their own time. I, I think that's it. Um, so for something that represents thirty percent of the internet to have so few people working on, yeah. That, so my call and Tammy's call and Monique and everyone else is, if you're, let's get some more people in here. Let's have 10 more people working on this and then see where we can take that in six months or a year. Um, so that's, I think, uh, what I'd love to see is, let's, let's make this team bigger. Cool. So that was Joshua who works with 
XWP, and we'll hear a little bit more from him shortly. Um, so what are they working on? They're working on the core interface and designs, design elements. They're working on feature design. They're working on plugin design. They're working on feature themes for the core and the special products, uh, projects such as the WordCamp themes and the WordPress default themes. They're working on interface bugs and glitches. And they're working on a cool little thing called Dashicons, which is like, it's like an a official WordPress icon set. And there's a whole bunch of them, and it's quite cute. Um, if you actually wanted to get involved in the Dashicons, if you just wanted to have a little little play at something and be involved in the WordPress design just in a little way, you can actually um, head over to the Dashicon style guide and it gives you uh, some instructions on how to get involved with that. And I thought that was kind of cute. Um, so the next person I spoke to was Tim. Now, I can never say his name his last name correctly. Tim's from uh, the Netherlands and he works with Yoast and he is a UX designer at Yoast. He started as, a, as an illustrator with Yoast. He joined, um, he joined when they, they put a call out for illustrators and he got really involved in, um, in learning about the conversion um, of their products and actually somehow kind of weaved his way into having, helping them found a UX team. Um, so he spends around a third of his time working on the WordPress project and at the moment he's been working on Gutenberg. Um, and he's a great example of where uh, a business or company invested or their products rely on WordPress. They've invested time by putting their staff into the front line of the WordPress um, development and design as well. Um, so we're going to hear a bit from Tim. Hopefully. Or not. Oops, there's Tammy. I started mostly in the Gutenberg side because um, I wasn't really doing much with core at that point. Uh, I think I was in the WordPress flag in the design team, but you know, it didn't really grab me for that. There's, there's a contribution I can make here, there's work that needs to be done. So I was just kind of observing. But then uh, we were looking at uh, making our plugin compatible with Gutenberg, and uh, yeah. they sort of threw me in as our first scout to see yeah. what the situation was, and it was uh, pretty bad. So, oh, really? Yeah, it, I, I think I, I spent about a month sort of banging my head against how we could integrate, because just there was a lot of stuff that wasn't there. Yep. This was maybe a year ago. Year so is this to do with the, the current user interface that we have for the back end of WordPress with the WordPress editor versus the new Gutenberg editor that is kind of stripping back the actual yeah. kind of those little blocks of, of fun. Yeah? So you need to, yeah. to have an really interface for stuff. that feedback tool that isn't in existence yeah. in because yeah, yeah. we have the, the big meta box below the content right now, and the, the directive at the start was very much we have to move everything to the sidebar. Yeah, and that was going to take up this much space. Yeah, and, and it was very timely compared to what we were used to, so we had to adapt lots of our interface to work with that. We were thinking of other ways we could integrate, and they weren't there yet, so we started suggesting those. And it, Oh. oh, I've lost your sound. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I missed that last thing that you said. Internet connection is a little unstable, so yeah. So, <laughs> Real um, people. Basically, I started working on Gutenberg full time in my sort of slots dedicated to working on core to, uh, to just get it up to par so we could integrate it. Yeah. And, uh, in working on that, I got to know the design team very well and sort of you know, made a name for myself in that community. Um, now I'm working a lot with Tammy, who's looking at sort of the, the design issues that are there in Gutenberg still. Yeah. And can you put feedback on this and sort of feed on it back and forth? Yeah. Trying to make everything better. So how and did then, the how did the um how, like what if I can ask like what could like what solution did you end up with for the interface for Yoast? And I guess this is probably solving not just Yoast problem, but but like a whole bunch of of 
um, theme and plug-in problems because they always just jigsawed onto that main page. Like, like how how is that now? How does that all work now? What did you come up with for the Yoast plugin? Yeah, so that's actually a good example of um, what we did is that when they said you have to move to the sidebar. Like they have, they have a couple of blocks there now, you know, the standard sort of sidebar sections yeah. that you have in the classic editor as well, but there was no way for a plugin to integrate. Yeah. So we built uh, the possibility that you could select from a menu, I want the, the Yoast SEO sidebar, or yeah. any other plugin can hook into that as well and make their own blocks in there, so they have the whole sidebar at their disposal. And uh, after that, we just shipped um, the possibility to also add a model that you can trigger from that sidebar so you have a little more space. Yeah. To oh, my head's just going, all the things, all the things. Yeah, like <laughs> whether or not there's like a little toolbar at the top that just drops yeah. down little icons to, to, sit, like, to make sure that those things are covered, but it's hiding it a little bit. So you ended up with the modal solution? Yeah, so we have the sidebar in now for a while, and the model is a, sort of an alternative to trigger yeah. that. Sorry, I hope you can hear your street sweeper come by. So that was Tim. He's a lovely guy. I spoke to him quite extensively. Um, and uh, I have to say, actually, talking to all these guys um, and gals, you'll hear from Tammy next, um, they all have these really great backgrounds because everyone's working remotely. So um, they don't actually work in an office. Um, I think Tim actually does work in the office with Yoast a little, but. Um, they have these beautiful backgrounds that they've made for their videos. I'm really impressed. All right. Um, so the next person that I spoke to was Tammy. And now she is uh, the experienced designer uh, employed by Automatic, who is the team behind WordPress, the business company behind WordPress. Um, and as you can see, if I'm going to use all the things again, Tammy is, is pretty much that. So I don't need to go through her um, resume there. But um, she is just going to discuss with me uh, something I prepared earlier, a little about how um, the design team has changed over the last few years and in even the last few months, I hope. I really hope. Whoops. Help. So the design team's been around for quite a long time. Uh, I don't know how exactly the years, but it's been quite a very long time it's been around. Uh, well, I would say the past year and a bit or so, we've had quite a rejuvenation of that team. Uh, we now have um, five design reps. Uh, so it's um, a rep is basically a tool that makes sure everything retains over the time. The best way to describe a team rep. Uh, uh, so for a long time, there was just a few people coming in and out. Uh, the design team now is a lot more organized. Specifically, um, this year, a lot of that's happened. So we have a trailer board, for example. We have uh, two meetings a week. Yep. We have a UI and UX triage. We only do half an hour for that, um, because it's like a short, sharp triage session. Um, just by regularly having that, we've got through a lot of court tickets. And we do that as a group. So that actually helps people who a new designer coming to track is a lot <laughs> to see so many see that. So being able to go through as a group really helps people and helps with onboarding there. Can we also have a weekly meeting? Yep. I was just gonna ask you, can I yeah. um so you mentioned the triage and the tickets. Are they coming yeah. from internal? Are they internal or are they coming from um just Community members, like how is that? A so, everything is community. So, um, so, basically, if you find something wrong with WordPress, what you do is you would look a bug and you look at a, a track ticket for that. Um, we actually had an interesting situation where if you found something wrong with that boot bag, you would look that and get help. So, we have like a, a split reporting currently until we choose things for one. Uh, but as a rule, if you find something wrong with WordPress, you would they can get a track ticket, and that is how they find it to work. Okay, so you're, those are the problems that you're solving, along with the core goals that you have. So those are, yeah, those are bugs and enhancements. We also have focuses, which is yeah. two of them. Um, so the focuses editor, customizer, and theme under the banner of Gutenberg. 
so we also have uh, each person on the design team, uh, some of them are campaign maintainers, so they have a personal interest. Uh, they also probably have personal interests and things they want to work on. So we have design comes as a whole project. So we have some designers who really want to work on metro projects, that's like WordPress.org. So they want to help with about pages, or they want to help with dashes, which is our icon pack. Or maybe their thing is word camps, and they want to help with the word camp thing. Uh, so they don't just have designers that want to work on core, which is like the, the product of WordPress. We have the whole ecosystem. And that's kind of the interesting thing in design team. We span a lot of different, so design's a big word, and designers all have their own thing that they want to do. Um, so that kind of is reflected in the design team as well. I hope that was interesting. Um, Tammy's amazing, and she's very focused, and she's, she's a very clever, clever woman. Um, and she has been working really hard on putting some structure into the design team, which I imagine is pretty hard when people are volunteering and have limited time and limited availability and uh, you know, don't know where to start. So she touched on new designers or new people coming in and wanting to contribute and kind of being overwhelmed at, at where to start. And so they're working really hard to make that a lot clearer. So if you do want to get involved and just give something a go, work with the team to see how it all works. Um, they're trying to make it easier for you. Um, so the next person I spoke to was Joshua um, from XWP and he is a product owner and a UX designer. Now, I actually asked Josh, Joshua quite a, a lot of things and he covered off some of the stuff that we were talking about just now. but. Um, I wanted to, to get an idea of what his insights to the future were and a snippet from him now. Again, hopefully. There's a nice little excited screen grab. Nope, nope, nope. Play. Just sort of step go back. Um, what are your sort of thoughts on design in the WordPress space? In, in general, how, how do you feel that it's moving and how do you feel, I mean, when the theme, uh, the, the talk I'm doing is beyond theme, so I think that while well, themes are important, um, like, I guess it's like our, those, those core themes that get developed by, um, by WordPress itself, um, how far are they going to be pushed, that kind of stuff? I'm curious about that. So my personal perspective on this, and I've been trying to figure this out myself because I want to see where WordPress can go. Um, as a system, WordPress did some things in the early days that were fundamental to making it unique and helpful for a lot of people. I mean, I built my, my life and my career on building websites around WordPress in some way or another. Yeah. Um, I feel that in the last couple of years, WordPress is starting to lag behind other systems, and, but there's actually there's a reason for this. Um, the CEO of Ghost wrote a long article a couple weeks ago about his experience building an open source CMS. Yeah. And all CMSs will, if it's, if it's open, it's inherently going to be more flexible. Yeah. If it's closed, it's going to be a better user experience, but you're going to be locked down to small verticals for what that closed CMS allows. WordPress is the biggest CMS out there, um, and it's extremely flexible. So it's always going to be harder to wrangle a good user experience in something that has to be open and flexible for a lot of different options. Yeah. So the, the observation I had from the, the, the CEO of Ghost was he was trying to build a flexible and vertically integrated system at once, and he realized that was a joke. He couldn't do both. So yeah. my perspective is we need to continue to embrace the flexibility of WordPress while trying to add a a bit of design structure around that, yeah. but not not veering into the other path entirely. Stay in a flexible path. So, uh, being more practical, um, I think there's ways we can make the ability to extend WordPress better. Uh, and a lot. Of Thank you, Joshua. <laughs> so I've got five minutes left, 
and I wanted to talk a little bit about how you can get involved. I have spoken about how I can get involved because I'm really interested now after doing my research and talking to the team how I can have a little bit of a, a, a thumbprint on this, this um, product. I've been using WordPress for five years um, consistently getting more and more excited about it every time they release something new. Um, I'm probably overly positive about all the new things because thankfully nothing's broken in, in my time of new features um, with WordPress. But um, thankfully WordPress and, and the team that make it have also got a really great easy path for you. Um, and if you ever wanted to put something in WordPress that isn't there, because it's open source and because it's built with so many people involved, um, you actually have an opportunity to, to get in there and, and have a say. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that your ideas will, will be picked up, but they'll never be heard if you don't tell them. And the fact that you might actually get an opportunity to then build that and know that that little that little icon, that little button was your um, idea, I think is a, is a nice little legacy to, to, to leave if you are working on this awesome software product. So um, I'm gonna put all the links, I've got my slides um, have been uploaded to the website so you can go and get all of these thing, links um, as you need them. But this is the make.wordpress.org uh, and you can actually go straight to the design um, straight to the design channel if you're interested in that. There's also uh, many other ways to get involved and many other channels. Um, we've got development, which are the other ones? Yeah, so um, this is a great opportunity to say something about that. So obviously you guys have all come to WordCamp and are from a great variety of backgrounds, be it design, content people, marketing types, maybe just a user at this point, maybe a hardcore developer. So if you want to get involved and, and contribute, then yeah, head to make.wordpress.org. There are um, different groups that work on different aspects of WordPress. So you might be on the meta team that um, deals with actually like the make WordPress website and wordpress.org. Maybe you would like to contribute some translations if you speak more than one language. Um, there's design team. Uh, there's a community team, which is a really good way to start as well because you can just devote like an hour a week or an hour a month or whatever time you have to talking with other users and um, helping to push along community activities like meetups and uh, word camps and that kind of thing. So, and of course there are the developer topics as well. But I think, especially people who aren't from a development background, have this sense that you know contributing to WordPress is all about contributing to core or plugins. That's not the case. So no matter your background, there is definitely a way that you can contribute if that's something you'd like to do. Thank so, you. Yeah, I appreciate that unexpected addition. <laughs> um, so that's me. Um, come and say hi. That's where I am. That was me yesterday, um, taking a photo instead of attending one of the, the um, talks because I needed a bit of time out. Um, and my references are on my slides, which you can download or go and have a look at at that address. So, thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Kath. We've probably just got a few minutes for questions, so wave your hand if you've got a, uh, a question about design on WordPress. Great. Uh, yeah, you probably covered the, very well the, the Gutenberg sort of path in a way and most uh, recent developments. Uh, without actually trying to bring any negativity, I know there was a recent decision of a jetpack to go into into WordPress.org and, and has raised a lot of issues in terms of how is it designed and how the solution has been bolted together. Do you have any insight on that and say, you know, it must have been quite a bit of a discussion and and leading into that decision that created quite a bit of uh, design concerns? Um, I actually can't answer that question. Um, I, I did. I did preface this with I may not be able to answer that question because I've just started researching um, how the team works and, and what those, um, those discussions are. But there is heaps and heaps and heaps of information um, available. One of, the, one of the places that you can go to, to learn a little bit, a bit 
more about those um, conversations that are happening is if you go to um, github.com forward slash WordPress, there's like a um, kind of an archive of all those conversations and how it's actually affecting the um, deployment of the, um, of the features into WordPress based on the feedback. I hope that helps. Any other questions? Hey, Kath. Hi, hi, Kath. Thanks for the talk. Really interesting um, seeing, you know, peeking behind the curtain. I think my question is unrelated to your talk <laughs> and sort of um, harks back to our... I like a, a skim cap. <laughs> is that what you mean? <laughs> harkens back to our broader Gutenberg conversation. Sure. Um, and this might not be the forum to ask you, but as a as a... Um, as a designer, you know that we we have a fairly um, similar work base and, and client base, etc. With Gutenberg in mind, what would you think that your would you change your tech stack in any way in response to Gutenberg? What would your tech stack be going forward with um, Gutenberg? So, look, I have installed Gutenberg on a whole bunch of sites that we've built. Um, and for, for those who don't know me, well, I'm not a developer. I use a, a as Judith says, a, a stack of tools in order to get um, the job done. And I have a developer um, and a number of people who help me on the jobs that need real development work. Um, so what I have found so far is that it's not affecting the, the, the actual, the bones of your site. It's not changing your themes. Um, the only sort of significant impact that I have considered, and we did touch on it during the panel, is that there's going to be more items that are more visible to our clients when they're putting things on their content pages that may need to be styled or get some attention from um, from your team, whether it just be simple CSS changes and um, overrides to make sure that um, that your styles that you've set up in your themes, particularly if you've done them custom, um, do actually accommodate those new blocks and items that are there. But it's, it's actually not too difficult. So when I design websites, um, one of the things my team does is we have this kind of HTML file that we whack into the, into the text um, into a text page, so a page, and we use a text editor, and we throw it in there, and then we see what it looks like. And it's got every heading, everything that sits on the page, every picture, every caption, you know, all of those kind of pieces of that is available in the what we now call the classic editor. All of those are covered off, so we know that they're styled. We know what they're going to look like. So if the client decides they want to use an HR, it matches their theme. If they decide that they want to put a, an image on the page and they want a caption, the caption actually looks decent because um, it, it uh, you know, a lot of people don't cover that stuff off. So I think it's just going to be a case of slightly adjusting the the. Um, styling of your theme to accommodate for the new content um, opportunities. It's not going to be changing your your overall design of your websites, and I don't think your stack is going to change much. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Is there anybody else that has a, a quick question to end on? One back here, and then we'll wrap up. Well, it's not a question, but it's an invitation to join the support aspects of WordPress, uh, which is where I participate. Now, I do a little bit on the, the Slack chat, but a lot more on the uh, WordPress org slash support. Um, and there's a little bit of everything. Um, uh, people come up saying, how can I do this? Or, or I've been... I've been hacked, what do I do? And, um, uh, well, you help people out and there, there's lots of levels there and um, you needn't be an expert, um, uh, but there's, um, and I learn a lot doing it. Thanks, Ross. Um, I might just finish up by saying that I have built my business and my bread and butter for the last five years on WordPress and it has been such a, a beautiful and generous community to be part of. And 
the opportunity to actually give a little bit back is, um, is exciting. And if you guys do have any time that you want to see how a, a process gets um, moved along and put into a mainstream software um, product, well, you've got a really good opportunity to see that. Thank you.